up everybody it's roger and victoria here from the disc kingdom podcast in this episode we're going to be talking about some of the news that came out of the animation panel at the um d23 expo which happened last weekend talked in great depth about the parks and the other bits and pieces but wanted to jump into some of the details that came out unfortunately none of it was streamed no photographs were allowed out um they did release some official photographs of what they wanted um but not live streamed, no footage, no trailers really came out. Um, let's just run through some of the details here. Um, I think John Lasseter was there. They had a load of information on Coco. They had um, some performances there. The only good thing is that they did actually release some video footage of them dancing and stuff. So there's been a little bit more information come out from this than they did of the, anim- the, the live action panel. Um, so Coco, they kind of did a big performance. Um, Olaf's Frozen Adventure. Coming out on November 22nd with the things. Josh Gad was there and did a performance. Um, I actually only just watched the trailer for this the other day of the actual one. I somehow missed the trailer for some bizarre reason. But that looks a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I really like that they took Elsa's original concept art and placed it into the short. I really like that a lot. There's a lot of those, quite a lot of comments on the YouTube channel. A lot of people going, Whoa, you're making us go see this at Coco? Have you not got faith in Coco? I don't, or the, even some people going, well, what, we would, we'll just walk out after Coco because my daughter won't sit for the movie. And we're like, well, give it a chance. It's like, right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's almost that thing of, well, we only really care about Frozen. You know, this is going to be, you know, I do want the, 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 they did the same with Cinderella and it definitely boosted that. I don't feel like Coco would need that, but nevertheless. Um, Incredibles 2, there was a little video shown out, which was a load of models and fashion people talking about Edna Mode. I'll be honest, it kind of went straight over my head. It was a bit Same. like, I was like, um, who are these people? I'm, you know, sorry. It's just like, it, it felt a little bit like, okay, we're trying to do something here to be quite funny and smart, but you just basically haven't got anything to show us. Yeah, that's how I felt. Like, I recognize, you know, Kendall Jenner, obviously, and Heidi Clue, and I get, you know, I get it, but that's not what I want. No. I've waited literally since I was very young to see this movie. I want to see a clip of the movie. Yeah. Um, they had like Samuel Jackson out on there on the stage. That's going to be coming out June 15th. I can understand in some respects, like, you know, you, they don't want to put out too many trailers at once for too much stuff. Um, Incredibles 2, we've not seen anything for, I would, hopefully I would imagine the people they got to see a little bit of it. Um, but yeah, so that one's, that one's definitely kind of interesting. But again, nothing groundbreaking need come out of that one. Wreck-It Ralph 2, they showed off, um, by looks of it, um, a couple of good scenes involving the Disney, pr- taking hilarious homage to the Disney princesses with original voice artists coming in for Moana, Anna from Frozen, Merida from Brave, uh, Rapunzel from Tangled, Tiana from Princess and the Frog, Pocahontas, Jasmine in Aladdin, um, Belle from Beauty and the Beast, and... Um, Ariel from Little Mermaid, they're all having a little bit of a fun, they all came out on the stage, that seemed to go down very well, that was definitely things that was buzzing out of, that was the one thing that really was buzzing out of the, on social media after the event or during the event, and there's some j- j- gags at Star Wars' expense, very much kind of aware of what's going on, that seemed to be some of this, a lot of inf- information, that's going to be coming out, um, when's that one coming out, that one's coming out November 21st, 2018. Hell yeah. Um, well, as far as wreck it Ralph 2, I mean, we got a, I think that was the film that got the most information shared. Mm-hmm. I mean, they introduced a new character, voiced by Taraji P. Henson. I think over here in the States, people most know her for Hidden Figures and Empire. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I think that definitely seemed to get, there was a lot of buzz around that. Um, it got me a little bit more excited about it, the idea that they got all these princesses in and a bit of jags. But as I've mentioned before, Wreck It Ralph is a video game. I want to see video game stuff. You know the stuff with the <laughs> Star Wars, and you know I don't. I want to. I want Mario and Tomb Raider, and you know, Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, and Tekken, and Virtual Fighter, and Street Fighter. Don't you know? And the fact that they brought in Oh My Disney, they end up going to that website, which sounds more like a a promotion of their own product. Um, it does. I'm like, please do some proper video game stuff because. This is starting to turn into pop culture rather than video games. And it's like, that's why I loved it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of pop culture now, but I'm also, I grew up with video games. And that's what sold me on Wreck-It Ralph in the first place. Yeah. So I'm hoping they do a good mix of both. And I'll be yeah. satisfied. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, just I mean, I'm I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, I have got a hundred percent. I will go see this. I love the first one. I love the characters. You know, I love the whole thing with the internet and stuff. But there's that part of me that's like, you know, I was hoping for a little bit more of a continuation of tongue in cheek and like involved in the video game stuff, rather than as per mainstream media, just avoiding video games and going out to the what they think is more important, and that's just. For me personally, an issue that I have with mainstream media and the way that they view video games. It's like, in, even Disney going, we got an amazing video game movie. We're going to make a sequel. Yeah, oh yeah, move the video game stuff. We want to push our own stuff. That's just my, I'm going to have to hold on to see what happens with that. Yeah, um, the whole Oh My Disney thing kind of threw me for a loop. I'm just like, okay, <laughs> so you're, you're obviously self-promoting yourself. Yeah. I mean, I'm not mad at that, but it's just kind of like, you could have do better than that. Yeah, it's also the fact as well that it's um, a website which is just generally not aimed at me. It's I read it and yeah, it's, it's, it's more very, for like... There's a much younger audience, and mm-hmm. but yeah, um, they do some good stuff on there, and I do read it occasionally, but there's a lot of just fluff that... I'm just no, okay. <laughs> um, they also announced a new Disney Toon Studios film coming out April 12, 2019, um, directed by Clay Hall and Bob Scanaway. Um, it's a fear, it's explores the future of aviation, taking moviegoers on the air, discovery of to the air and beyond. Sounds a little bit called to me, just called planes in space or spaceships. Um, this is basically what it is. It's based on. Um, apparently, James was telling me I think there, there was planes, there some different planes moving around. Um, it's like Disney Toon Studio. I'm going. To, I literally had to go. Who were they? Who? Oh, what? Who did they? Do? Like, because <laughs> they haven't. I can't figure the last thing that they did. Other than planes. Planes. Yeah. That was. That's the only thing I know they did was planes. Yeah. So now we got planes free in space by the looks of it. Um, <laughs> It's that hard thing, you know, we've only, as far as we've only seen, we've got one picture of some space with a ship in it that looks like it could be, they haven't view, zoomed in to push it for cars. Um, hard to know, really, from our point of view, much about it, but I do love the fact that they at least come out with something new and announce something at the event, because that's the, something that hasn't been, I haven't seen any rumours, I hadn't seen any variety reports, that was about the one good thing out of that whole event that kind of jumped out at me. Yeah, see, with the space thing, I saw, like, jokes about it on Tumblr. But when they announced it, I'm like, oh, this is real. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. It's yeah. the original, so. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't even seen Planes Fire and Rescue yet. Um, I don't think Planes was that bad, but it's, you know, uh, <laughs> one of them things. Toy Story 4, um, yeah. 21st of, July, of June 2019. Um Basically, um, I think they are. They've changed the actor. John Lasseter's not doing it. Um, yeah, it's Toy Story. Um, personally, I was more excited about the Toy Story Kingdom Hearts world. That was kind of what got me a lot more excited. Um, yeah, this one it wasn't too much about that. Me personally, I'm just still like, why? Why, mummy? <laughs> that's all it's. It's. it's, it's yeah, right. yeah, and you know what? You're absolutely right. <laughs> it's just keeping the keeping the franchise alive. There's lots more stories to do. I'm sure it'd be great. I've got li- no like. It's like you, they don't. They know what they're doing with Toy Story. I've gotten this complete faith in them doing it properly. It will be fun. Um, but and that's something else I want to bring up in a bit. So then we got Frozen to be title to be confirmed. Coming out on November 27th. Um, again, it makes more sense for them to be pushing the new Olaf short coming out this winter. Um, but that, to me, just feels like, right, we need to keep the, the merchandise rolling for another 18 months or another two years. So here's... A, and that's all those, these little shorts. Because I've never seen... It's, I don't feel like they've done this in a while where it's like, we haven't got time... We can't get this movie out well enough. So we did Frozen Fever and now we're doing this Olaf one literally just to keep... Frozen alive with new merchandise and new products because we're not ready for the next movie. And first off, I don't think Frozen will ever have issues selling products. That's why I don't really understand why they're doing the short. Like for Coco, I understand, but I would do it at the end maybe, mm. so that way people will at least stay and watch Coco, give it yeah. a chance, and then do it. But it's like, well, Pixar when Pixar does it, at least it's original. Yeah, original. Yeah. 
Personally, I mean, I love the fact of having the shorts and shorts before movies. I wish they ordered them. Um, I love that. You know, I love it on when the Marvel ones when they come out on home video where you can watch that little short just before, oh, yeah. like a like the end credit scene, but something else and a little tie in. Um, I wish they would all do that more. I love the fact that Disney do those little shorts before, and they always usually are great. And it just it just reminds that that. It just feels good when you're at the cinema. Um, they also announced a new um, Dan um, Scanlon. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Who helmed Pirate um, Monsters University? He's doing something with trolls where um, lost their they lost their he's like they've lost their father. They're in a non-human world of elves, trolls, and sprites based on a on a design from the 70s. It tells the story of two teenage elf brothers whose father died. And they were too young to remember them, but thanks to a little magic left in the world, the boys embark on a quest which allowed them the chance to spend one last magical day with their father. Um, sounds interesting. I like. I'm, I'm. That's again was something that kind of wasn't expecting, and I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, something new, something, something." I mean, it's, it's trolls. Um, I hope it's going to be damn sight better than the universal version of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, this is what I'm. This is the only thing that really jumped out at me as new, new characters, something different. I mean, it sounds pretty deep, but at the same time, not relying on franchises. No, absolutely. After Incredibles two and Wreck It Ralph, this was the one that really made me like pay attention. I was like, oh, something new. It sounds like amazing. Mm -hmm. Like they had me a unicorn, to be quite honest. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm for it. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's just that weird thing of, like, we've got a few years of movies here of animation ones, and it's like, I wish they kind of went a little bit more, like, new, uh, you know, new franchise, new franchise, new franchise, rather than it just feels a little bit like franchise, 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 new one. I mean, yeah, there's Coco, I mean, Planes in Space, it's not really a new franchise, it's kind of a tie-off, and then... You know, it's it's that really fine line. I mean, obviously Disney want to keep their franchises going, but I would, and we've said this about the live action one, would like a little bit more originality. And yeah. reading some of the reports from this, I was reading over the weekend on the news about um, cinema box office is dropping. There's been a big issue this year with cinema tickets just not really doing very well after the first weekend. Um, people not going, seeing a number of franchises, Transformers, Pirates of the Caribbean, even Spider-Man Homecoming suffered from that as well, um, about where this kind of thing of people are getting a little bit, I mean, obviously cinema tickets are very expensive, but they're getting a little bit um, sort of bored out with all these franchises and they're, it's costing too much to go and, you know, we've seen them before and they're not quite bringing as much bang for their buck that they used to. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, there's just a lot of franchise. Like, I honestly haven't gone to the movies as often as I used to compared to last year. Like, I mean, I just saw Spider-Man Homecoming for the second time just because, you know, a friend wanted to go. But mm. it, it was, if she hadn't seen it, I wouldn't. There's actually there's a few movies. I mean, I still haven't gone and seen Cars 3, um, which, I mean, that only came out just over a week ago here. Uh, I'm a little bit like, hmm, if I don't say the cinema, is not really going to matter. Um, Wonder Woman was one I did miss. Um, Transformers was one I wanted to go see, but it's like, well, let me just wait for the movie. It's an odd one, and I feel like Disney, you know, they've got a lot of movies on their slate coming up. Um, and there's not a lot of originality. I mean, I'm happy with Star Wars and Marvel. I mean, I, I'm happy that they are doing stuff a little bit different. I don't think it's quite feeling quite so bad. but even I'm going you guys might need to ease off the pedal a little bit start cooling down um and the animation ones you know Toy Story 4 I could have added another two years to four years or five years on that and I really wouldn't have worried about it see and that's the thing I feel like they should have pushed Toy Story 4 back and switched it with Gigantic I don't know what exactly the issue with Gigantic is but it, at least it's original you would have at least had two original movies Mm. And Toy Story broke away, in my opinion. That's just... Yeah, I mean, it's like that kind of thing. I mean, it's like Gigantic got shown off at the at last at the last D twenty three. So the fact that they pushed it back again, you know, well into the twenties, is a little bit disappointing. Again, it's something. I mean, it's not even really that too new because it's just Jack of the Beanstalk. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how this all works. I mean, Disney have been on a roll. But they, you know, they are they're going to start stumbling on some issues, and you know, 
they were already jumping all over Spider-Man, sort of not quite hitting what they thought it was. Um, but I don't. I I think the big one's going to be Coco. I think that one's going to be. It may depends on how well the movie is, but this one, that one's risky. Yeah, Coco's really risky because literally since they announced it, I've all I've heard is people say, "Isn't this book of life?" Which is ironic because I'm wearing my book of life skirt right now. But it's like at the same time, it's a different story. You don't need just one story based on mm. that culture. Yeah, I mean, personally, I've not seen Book of Life, so this one for me is completely fresh. I know nothing about it, um, so I'm going in completely um, blind. Um, but there again, it's that thing, isn't it? Franchise versus new. New is a risk. Franchise is a safer bet. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, Lee, I did feel like the animation panel at least gave us a number of different things to be excited about um, as a whole. For you? Um... I would have been happier if they maybe showed did the same thing with live action. At least give us one trailer. Just one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just one. I would have been fine. Yeah, I mean, there's that kind of... I mean, I can understand, again, not showing us too much. You know, keeping it, you know, keeping in um, Incredibles back. But, I mean, the old days of where they used to put the trailers in front of the movie, so people went to the cinema to watch the movie, the trailer. Um, it was odd they didn't, you know... I mean, I don't even remember there being a new Coco, you know, or even, you know, hold, hold on to Frozen. You know, put the Frozen trailer out that weekend instead. Um, it's just an odd one. I mean, that, e that Edna Mode Incredibles one, I thought was just a really odd choice for being a trailer for someone that was like, this has got nothing to do with what this movie's about. I mean, I get why they did it, but it's at the same time, it's like, I don't really care. Yeah. I, like, you have a big fan base who's ready to see Incredibles 2, and that's all you give me. I'm just like, no. Yeah, I mean, I would could have, you know, even a 15, 20 second, like, you know, like, s s planes in space, you know, that kind of thing, or even just Incredibles, just a few, like, suiting up, here's the, here's the logo, here's the movie date, release date, coming soon kind of thing. Could have really have just, would have just been a big thing. It just feels as a whole, there was an odd, an odd era coming out disney had a different idea of this d23 expo than they have in the past where they were sending them information out but they weren't really embracing modern life i don't feel like this week that weekend no i mean i don't <laughs> yeah i just so, yeah. <laughs> hopefully by 2019 it'll, they'll have done it all i think again having seen what they've done with celebration but that one's gone as well for a year or two. Um, it feels a little bit like okay, you, it's it felt a little bit of a missed opportunity. But as a whole, I definitely come out of that animation of the news that came out of it a little bit more excited about some of the movies and stuff. And at least at least we know we've got lots of, on the pipeline. But one or two a year is to me feels enough for Disney. I I don't like to sort of squeeze a little bit too many in. Yeah, I mean they did show off the. The official timeline for every film, which yeah. I I did appreciate. Yeah, I always so. love that. I always love that image. It always looks great. And you sit there and go, okay, how much do I need to pay my cinema for the next um three years? <laughs> um, it definitely does look a good lineup. But on that note, guys, we'd love to know what you guys thought of the animation panel at the D23 Expo. Were you there? Could you tell us some ideas of what we did, maybe didn't see? If you weren't there, what are you excited about? Love to know your thoughts. Get in touch with us as well through social media. Victoria, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram, he calls me Pineapple Princess. And on that note, guys, check us out over at thiskingdom.com and I shall see you guys in another episode. Later. Bye.